Hi everyone and welcome back to DiabetesDietGuide.com or if you're watching on YouTube you are equally as welcome. If you don't know me, I'm Mark, Diabetes Specialist Dietitian and today we are talking about why your glucose levels might rise overnight in type 1 diabetes. Now I've done this in type 2 diabetes and I've been promising this video for a while. My apologies, I accidentally deleted it twice before I'd actually exported it onto my computer. So stupid me, but now we're going to really get into it and explain three or four reasons as to why your glucose levels do rise overnight. Now, just starting things off, you can see I've drawn a rather haphazard diagram here. This is something that I use just to demonstrate the different time spots in the day. On your left, uh, it's uh, blood glucose levels up here, and then we have breakfast, lunch, dinner, evening, and then overnight. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we can do, let me just get my pens out is check out what different insulins you're on because this the same principles will be applicable to both um, pump users and also people that are taking subcutaneous injections so usually it's going to be some variation of a basal bolus regimen okay so the first insulin you have in your system is your 24 hour insulin known as your background insulin so that might be something along the lines of Traceba, Atlantis, Levomir, Abazagla, something like that so it's 24 hour coverage. What this insulin does is it works on your liver. So it stops your liver kicking out too much glucose, but also if we have too much of this in our system, it'll also prevent your liver from releasing enough glucose, which leads you prone to hypos. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that this insulin is correct. And I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so this one's working on the liver. Then, assuming you're having three square meals a day with some carbohydrate containing foods in them, you will also have your rapid acting insulin. Okay, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Okay, you might take more injections, you might take less depending on your lifestyle. Now these rapid acting insulins last about four and a half hours. Okay, so that might be something like Nova Rapid or Humalog, Apidra, four and a half hours, give or take. So we have two different insulins working. Obviously, if you're using a pump, then you only have the one insulin, which is a rapid insulin that acts both as your background insulin and your rapid acting insulin. But the principle is the same nonetheless. The only difference with pump is we can adjust this background insulin. Whereas if you are taking subcutaneous injections, once this one's in, it's in. And of course, with the rapid acting injections known as um, bolus injections, these might vary depending on how much you're eating or whether or not you need to correct your levels. If you don't know what I'm talking about with corrections, uh, it's beyond the scope of this video today, but do check out the type one section on my blog because it talks all about corrections and how to um, uh, sort out variable glucose levels in type one diabetes. Now, of course, here we got overnight. So let's look at the first reason as to why your glucose levels might be high. So it might look something like this. You go to bed, actually, let's use, uh, no, blue's fine. So no, let's use black, let's use black. So you might be going to bed, around here and your glucose levels are ticking along nicely but then regularly what you're seeing is your glucose levels are high when you wake up it can be very frustrating because now you're starting the day up against it because you're having to sort this out before you can even get into your stride of things and it's extra stress so we get it so the first thing that we'd be looking at is whether or not this background insulin is correct because overnight is independent of any rapid insulin you might take because this is out your system as you can see you shouldn't be eating anything overnight for most people um, because you're asleep and you shouldn't be doing any exercise as well because again you're asleep so actually we've taken out most of the variables that will affect your glucose levels other than this background insulin and what your liver's kicking out and other hormones in the body so if you're seeing a rise like this overnight it's an indication that your glute that your uh, background insulin might not be enough but there is one um, caution that you need to practice with this, what we'll talk about on point number two, but let's just delve into this. So it's an indication that this background insulin may need to be increased, but we don't want to do that straight away. So first thing, we need to put this to the test. And the best way to do that is to do what we call a background or basal test. And for me, the way I would do that is I would have a carbohydrate free meal on various different days. So you might do breakfast or breakfast and lunch, then you might do lunch. Uh, or lunch and dinner. So the idea is that we're doing carbohydrate free meals where we don't need to take any rapid insulin. So that's one variable we're taking out of the equation. Obviously it's carbohydrates that increase your glucose levels. So if we're also removing the carbohydrates from the meal, then in theory there's nothing that should really increase your glucose levels. 
So if you've taken out the rapid insulin and you've taken out the carbohydrates from the meal, then again, just like overnight, the only thing that's affecting your glucose levels is this background insulin. So if you start to see the glucose levels rising throughout the day, despite the fact there's no carbohydrates, and despite the fact you haven't got any other variables going into your body, like rapid insulin, obviously that would lower your glucose levels, then it shows us that this proves the theory, actually. So it shows us that then the background insulin isn't keeping your glucose levels in check, which proves the theory that it's not enough. So we need to increase the background insulin. I usually would say just go up in modest increments, maybe 10% at a time. You don't wanna suddenly double your background insulin because then that leaves you prone to hypos. So that's a real simple way that you can test what's going on. And if the basal or background test does prove that the glucose levels are rising, then we can just start to increase this by 10% increments. So that's number one. Number two is kind of the opposite effect actually. So you go to bed, let's try and find my uh, black pen again. So you go to bed, but actually what's happening is you're suffering a hypo overnight. So you've got quite a low glucose level. Now what happens when you suffer a hypo is your body kicks into action. So your liver actually dumps a bunch of glucose into your blood to try and counteract it. So even if you didn't treat a hypo, you would still get this action, you would still get this reaction from the liver, but it's whether or not then it can overcome the amount of insulin in your body. So you still want to have something sugary, but a lot of the time overnight, people aren't picking this up, but then because they've had this big influx of glucose from the liver into the bloodstream, they wake up high. So tying in with that previous point, had you just increased your background insulin based on the fact that you rise overnight, actually you'd be putting yourself at huge risk because you were actually suffering a hypo. So increasing the background insulin in this instance would have actually made this hypo more severe and could have possibly been quite serious, which is why it's very, very important to try and do a basal or background test in the day when you're in control, when you're awake, when you're awake because had the glucose level started to reduce in the day, then it shows us actually that the background insulin is too much, assuming you aren't doing other things around that that would also lower your glucose levels like exercise. So that's number two. Number three is a tricky one to sort out actually. So there is something called the dawn phenomenon where the, the hormones in your body that get you ready for the day start to kick in around two, three, four, five a.m. Things like um, cortisol and growth hormone, basically designed to get things moving. And what they do is they get the liver to also release glucose from the liver. So your glucose levels start to rise. Now without diabetes, you're on a finely tuned bandwidth in terms of what your glucose levels will go to. But because we are injecting insulin, and particularly if you're on subcutaneous injections, once this background insulin's in, we can't do much about it. So you're gonna have the same level throughout the day. Pump, you can adjust this, all right? But those hormones can start to make your glucose levels rise in the early hours of the morning, even though actually they've been ticking along quite nicely for the, for the rest of the night. Now, there's not much you can do about it other than a correction dose of rapid insulin in the morning to sort that out, or it can be an indication to go on the pump therapy because you can then set a time block between the hours where you get the increase in your glucose levels to increase your background insulin in order to then reduce the effect of the hormonal response for your glucose levels to rise. So it's a very tricky one to sort out and it's actually why a lot of people end up on pump, but it can be a reason. Now using um, flash glucose sensors like the Libre or continuous glucose monitors like the Dexcom where we get a full picture of what's happening for a 24 hour snapshot have been really useful because we're starting to be able to pick that up because it will usually look something like your glucose levels are ticking along real nice overnight just nice and flat and then just in the morning boom you get a big increase and we're able to pick that up now whereas before when you're just doing finger prick tests either you're boiking up quite frequently to do finger prick tests to do that and then you wake up absolutely knackered or we just have to put it down to um, some other cause or actually we're, we're guessing basically we're guessing then in which case when we're guessing that's when it gets more risky so it's great technology that's helping us actually identify what the problem is that's number three the fourth and final one that i wanted to talk about is where are your glucose levels before you go to bed because the way this background insulin works is we generally want it to keep you pretty steady. We don't want big swings in your glucose levels overnight um, 
due to the dose of your background insulin. So if you're shooting really high overnight, we've already talked about why that might be, but we don't want it going up tremendous, a tremendous amounts overnight and we don't want it crashing down tremendous amounts overnight. So let's do an example here. So let's say you've gone to bed a bit high at say, I don't know about here. Now in diabetes, we work backwards. So this glucose result is the response of what's happened at dinner. This glucose response is what's happened at lunch. This one's here is what's happened at breakfast and the morning one's what's happened overnight and at that meal there. So let's use this one as an example. So as you can see, actually, if we were to draw a line across, we're not a million miles away from our wake up glucose here. So actually the background insulin's kept you quite stable. So my argument would be that it's this dose here that is insufficient because your glucose levels based on this reading here have actually gone up. So we've not given enough rapid insulin, which has caused you to go to bed high, but then actually your glucose levels have been pretty steady overnight. So we haven't seen a big reduction. Now there'll be some people that will argue if you go to bed here and wake up in target, then brilliant because I've woke up in target. Um, so actually I can start the day off much better. And if that's a consistent thing that's happening, then absolutely fine. Okay. I'm not going to argue with you, but let's just, do a hypothetical scenario here where this glucose level is much lower and now you've gone to bed here. Now the reason that glucose level has corrected itself overnight is due to this background insulin. So if you went to bed lower, this is lower, but then this one is also going to be lower. So what do you think is going to happen here? Big hypo. And I see this all the time. We increase the bolus injections, the rapid insulin, not thinking about actually what to do with this 24 hour insulin, the background insulin. So they go to bed lower and then they have a big hypo overnight um, because no one's thought about that. So that's just one thing to think about because I see it all the time. We adjust one insulin, go to bed lower, big hypo overnight, okay? So actually think about where you were before bed because ultimately this number will link in with that morning glucose rise. So we don't want your background insulin giving you big swings, all right? But ideally, it's within a pretty narrow bandwidth of the variation that you'll see in your glucose levels from where you went to bed and where you woke up overnight. And then we can work on your ratios or your rapid insulin regimen in order to try and adjust the swings in your glucose levels throughout the day. So hopefully that makes sense, guys. Um, so there's four different reasons as to why your glucose levels might be running high overnight um, or you might be waking up from a high glucose in the morning. As I say, it can really frustrate patients and it throws them out a little bit for the rest of the day. But maybe just tune into those four different uh, ideas and have a play around and see if actually any of them resonate with your, your own type 1 diabetes. And if you find the video useful, guys, make sure you check out the blog at www.diabetesdietguide.com where we've got a whole bunch of free information for people with all types of diabetes, including type 1, which is designed to help you get ideas about better managing your conditions. If you need an extra hand, we have one-to-one -one consultancy services, which is all about helping people lower the HbA1c and therefore giving them the best chance to reduce the risk of long-term complications and also improve their quality of life so they're not having to worry so much about chasing their glucose levels all day, every day. So it's about putting strategies and plans in place that makes this the path of least resistance. So hopefully, hopefully that was useful. Make sure if you've got any questions or comments, you drop them below. I do my best to respond to all of them, whether it's on YouTube, the blog, or on Facebook. So I'll leave it there and I'll see you later.